would you like to see your city from a brand new point of view? In a whirly bird chopper, big helicopter, flying right out of the blue. Land on top of a building, take off in the wink of an eye. Those whirly birds, choppers, big helicopters, a reason to identify. These birds can fly. Straight up and straight back down From a big twin rotor to a little whirly bird To a new helicopter buzzing over your town Well, it's not exactly in their name Once you see one, you'll understand why That the whirly birds, choppers, big helicopters Are the coolest way to fly These birds can fly Straight up and straight back down From a big twin rotor to a little whirly bird To a new helicopter buzzing over your town But it's not exactly in their place Once you see one, you'll understand why That's the whirly birds, choppers, big helicopters Are the coolest way to fly Yes, the whirly birds, choppers, big helicopters Are the coolest way to fly we better hurry, or we're going to miss the commuter helicopter. Cindy, I'm hurrying. I love that we live so close to the airport. Helicopters are the most amazing vehicles. Oh, no, I think we missed it. There it is. Yep, that's our helicopter. Hey, Taylor, look! What? Wow! It's a, you know... Junk? No, a, a boom boom, a, a... A boom boom boomerang! What? Yes! And it's mine! Wait a minute, you're that guy, that genie guy. The genie with the hard hat. Hard hat Harry. Yes, at your service. And what are your names? I'm Taylor, and this is Cindy. We live down the street from each other. Oh. If that's a boomerang, isn't it supposed to come back to you? Well, yes, but... Then uh, what's it doing here? Well... <laughs> Uh, I, I was having a little trouble, and... Well, then can I try? Well, sure. The idea is you throw it up in the air, and then it whirls around, and then it's supposed to come back to you. <laughs> yes! Are you sure that wasn't magic? Throwing this boomerang isn't magic. Cindy was the one who made it fly. How? Well, this boomerang is a prototype or early design for how to fly objects that are heavier than air. Like a helicopter? Exactly. You see, a boomerang is an early model or example of what a helicopter design was based on. One day, I'm going to fly in a real helicopter. One day. One day? Well, ooh, how about today? Really? Can we? Yes! I feel an adventure coming on. Let's go check out some helicopters. Let's go fly! Great! Yes, please! All right, Cindy and Taylor, get ready for departure. Oh, 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 wait a minute. First, your gear. Hmm. Well, we're going to have to improvise a little bit here. You see... Nowadays, pilots of helicopters usually wear different outfits depending on their job. Well, for example, commercial or commuter pilots wear white shirts with epaulets, and pilots in the military usually wear jumpsuits, and news helicopter pilots wear their street clothes. Oh, well, I think this is going to be a little conspicuous. I know. Why don't we wear helicopter motif caps? Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, uh, Harry. What? Eat your hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't think we're going to be needing this. 
is that they can land or take off in small spaces. They don't require a lot of room like airplanes do for takeoff. Like a runway. Exactly. Helicopters can land here at the airport or in a vacant field or on a ship or even on the top of a tall building. In fact, I think I hear one now. Yeah, there is. We know a helicopter by those top rotating blades. They're called the rotor blades or the rotors. To fly a helicopter, a pilot must have 250 hours of training and be at least 18 years old. You see how this accurately modeled miniature helicopter shows you how the blades are shaped. You see, the top of the blades are curved so that the air travels more quickly over the top than over the bottom. And it's the top rotor blades that are spinning and moving the air that keeps the helicopter flying. Uh, Hard Hat Harry, do you think we should move? I think the helicopter's about to land. Oh, oh, good idea. Uh, let's back out of here. Oh, for safety purposes, we always stay away from the tail rotor, like we always stay away from the rear of a horse. <laughs> Come on. Those blades whirling around at the back of the helicopter are the tail rotor. The rear blades stabilize the chopper at low altitudes and prevent it from spinning around. Let's go. Hi there. Hey, how you doing? All right. I'm Hard Hat Harry, and these are my friends Taylor and Cindy, and Hi. we're wondering if you can tell us about the helicopter you're piloting and how it flies. Sure. My name's Bob. It's your standard 206B helicopter. Sure. It's primarily used for uh, commuter aircraft. We also do uh, rescue operations with it, as uh, well as uh, gathering news. The um, most important part of the helicopter is the uh, rotor head. Um, primarily, it's a two-blade rotor system. The uh, rotor head is comprised of uh, several moving parts that uh, keep the blades turning. So, Bob, the controls for the rotor head are located inside the cockpit, right? Absolutely. I should hope so. I, I hope so, too. <laughs> Depending on which way I input the controls, it designates whether the, the helicopter should go forward, aft, left, or right, and tilts the rotor system as a whole. Can we sit inside the cockpit? Sure. Hop in. Let's go. This way, Cindy. Let's see. Over here. There we go. The pilot of the helicopter, like Bob, has to be very skilled. He sits in the hot seat and he uses his hands on some of the controls and his feet on the pedals for some of the other controls, all the while looking out the window while looking at the instrument panel with all the other controls. What does the instrument panel show? Oh, it shows all kinds of things like the speed or how high the helicopter is flying or the altitude and the engine temperature and the fuel levels. And this here's the radio. Go ahead and put these headsets on. These ones here are for you. Cool. That's how we talk to uh, air traffic oh. control. We let them know when we're taking off, landing, and whenever we're operating near an airport. This is Taylor and Cindy preparing for takeoff. Are we clear? Draw clear. If we were flying, would I use this? Absolutely. And this is cyclic. This controls the tilt of the rotor blades. It, uh, determines which way the helicopter flies by moving it forward, aft, or side to side. What's over here? That's a collective pitch. We use that one there to make us go up and down. It also controls our airspeed. Cool. How do you make it go faster? Well, what you do is you add the collective lever, and you push the socket forward. That makes the helicopter go faster. Now, for flying a piston engine on a helicopter, we'd actually have to add throttle. And these are the foot pedals. They control the uh, helicopter turning left or right while it's in hover. By pushing on the pedals, you change the pitch of the tail rotor. So, Bob, do you think you can give us a ride? Uh, as a matter of fact, I was just about ready to go to the island to do some sailing. Would you guys like to join me? Yeah! 
Hi. Oh, good. Oh, well, wait a minute. Maybe we should give this whirly bird a once over on the outside. I mean, the kids don't even know where the engine is yet. Let's go. Is this where the engine is? This is a turbine engine. It supplies more power with less weight and it uses jet fuel. But most of the training helicopters use high octane gasoline. What is this tube for? Well, air flows through this tube called the pitot while the helicopter is flying. And by measuring how fast the air flows through this tube, it indicates the speed at which the helicopter is flying. How fast can this helicopter fly? It can go up to 150 miles an hour, but we usually cruise around 120. Whoa! Well, now that we know all about this bird and we know where the engine is, I think we're ready for that ride, Bob. How about it, Taylor and Cindy? Sure! Double sure. All right, let's go. Hey, buckle in. Power. Got a lot of electric questions here, Bob. Is it power? Got a lot of electric. Where's the cable? Power. the CH-53. It's a troop carrier, and its duty is to carry more than 40 people from one location to the other. It's the largest and most powerful helicopter in the world! I believe that it's huge! And that's why it's called the Super Stallion! The Super Stallion? I'd like to fly this. Well, you'd fly this from the cockpit. Let's go check it out. Okay, yeah! It doesn't have a 
tail rotor. Righto! Instead of having a tail rotor, the Sea Knight has a second top rotor. Yay! It's officially known as the CH-46, and it's used for medium lifting. And because it's a helicopter, it can drop people and supplies off just about anywhere without the need of an airport. But you know, I can't answer all these questions by myself, but I know someone who can, the pilot of this machine. Well, look who just popped in. These are my friends Taylor and Cindy, and I'm Hard Hat Harry, and I think we have some questions for you. Hi, I uh, hope I have some answers for you. I hope so, too. <laughs> Why doesn't this helicopter have a tail rotor? Oh, this helicopter doesn't need them. We have two main rotors instead. Yeah, how does it stay stable without one? This rotor spins in this direction, and the aft rotor spins in this direction. That's what keeps the aircraft stable. Why do you have a purple box on your flight suit? Well, that's our squadron mascot. Everybody in the squadron wears one of these. And we also have them painted on the back of the helicopter. Cool. Thanks for dropping in, Captain. Uh, I better pop you back to your station before they find out you're missing. Yeah, I think you better. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye. Hey, let's go take a look inside. All aboard. I better start lifting weights again. What did you guys eat for breakfast? Well, three waffles. Ten five, donuts. Five hundred eggs. And seventy bagels. Actually, I had five bowls of cheery. Now, here is the cockpit. Now, the pilot sits on the right, and the co-pilot sits on the left. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Now, this helicopter is known as a troop carrier, Ooh. and it can hold up to 12 to 18 Marines who sit right here. Check this out. Oh, that's one of the smallest kinds of helicopters around. Well, let's go take a look. This way. That's an OH-58D observation helicopter. Would you like to be able to see it better? Sure. Well, maybe these will help. Binocular. Thanks. Notice how this observation helicopter has a round ball on top of it. Mounted inside the ball is a high-powered remote control camera, which gives the operator 360 degrees of visual surveillance. What if it is night? Well, the helicopter is equipped with all sorts of high-tech radar and remote sighting systems. Like laser beams? Precisely. Well, these binoculars certainly help, but I don't think we're going to be needing them anymore. Instead, let's call on the troops to put on an up-close, action-packed, fancy-flying air show. Let's have a sky-high parade of their full array of interesting and incredible helicopters at work in full glory. have the utility helicopters. Utility helicopters are used for either low-level observation or to transport some people or light equipment. Here is the Bell UH-1N, one of the smallest 7 to 10 passenger helicopters. It's also known as the, 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 the Huey Hawk. What is this Huey Hawk used for? Well, it's used to bring the bacon in to feed the troops. Uh, well, just seriously, often it's used for medical evacuation. See how utility helicopters come in a few different shapes and sizes? I like that camouflaged painted one. That joint can't be spotted in the jungle, right? Right. Whoa, coming right at us is a Sikorsky MH-60G AVOC. Here's a utility helicopter carrying a load of supplies on a hoist. And there's the super stallion carrying an entire truck on a hoist. That's one strong helicopter. On the ground or in the air, it's a real workhorse. Look, that's a real skinny helicopter. That helicopter. 
helicopter is called an Apache, and it's used for combat. The Apache is so narrow that the gunner sits in the front, and the pilot sits behind the gunner. Located on the sides of the helicopter are the missiles, or rockets. And this one is the Cobra attack helicopter. It's agile and accurate. Here's the helicopter with the two top rotors. Right! A twin rotor helicopter! Yay! And it is also a heavy lifter, able to transport people inside and carry heavy loads underneath. Hard hat, Harry! What fun things do people do with helicopters? <gasps> I thought you'd never ask! Hard hat, Harry! Are you going to... Oh! The mountains! <gasps> You see, commercial transport helicopters transport people to the best and most remote areas for skiing. And professional and very experienced skiers know that helicopters are the best way to get there. Well, well come on, let's watch. to fly for years, but it wasn't always as easy as it is now. It took a lot of figuring out. How were helicopters invented? Well, why don't we go to a place where we can find out? Where are we going? The Helicopter Museum. Come on. This is the Helicopter Museum. I like this. And this is the H-19. But the first person to design a helicopter-like machine was Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci? I learned about him in school. He was born over 400 years ago. Were there helicopters back then? Oh, no, 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 no. But it was Leonardo who saw the difference between flight like birds, or flapping flight, and the kind of flight we refer to today as gliding flight, which involves slight movement, but not the beating of wings. Now, he sketched a helicopter, kind of like machine, back in the 1400s, but it was hundreds of years later before other pioneers began to study his ideas. Hmm. When was the very first helicopter built? Helicopters as we know them were developed about 60 years ago. In 1936, the first fully controllable helicopter was built in Germany. And in 1938, a woman pilot, Hannah Reich, flew a helicopter at an exhibition. She took off, maneuvered, hovered, and landed the helicopter. But the payload wasn't big enough for people to consider it very practical. What about in America? Well, why don't we take a look into my genie time machine watch and I'll show you the first U.S. helicopter. This is the Sikorsky VS-300, the first United States helicopter. The Sikorsky? Yes. It was designed by a Russian man named Igor Sikorsky. This helicopter has superior controllability because of its unique tail rotor and it could carry a heavy payload. So the Sikorsky VS-300 was the first practical helicopter. Yes, in 1939, and it started a whole new industry. Production began after the end of World War II when jet engines made helicopters much more practical and safer. This helicopter has three blades, and other helicopters have four. That's right, Cindy. Helicopters come in many different variations for different reasons. Like what? Well, I could tell you. Or would you like to see helicopters in action? We definitely would rather see helicopters in action. Woo -hoo! And you, Taylor? Definitely. Well, then, let's get ready to go around the world to see some whirly bird, high flying, rotor spinning, hovering helicopters. Old McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a helicopter.
helicopter. E-I-E-I-O. Hard hat Harry? Why would a farmer have a helicopter? Well, because this helicopter is a crop dusting helicopter. The farmer can drop seed or fertilizer on the farm from the air with this whirly bird. It saves time and does the same job as if the farmer was down on the ground. Cool. Yeah. Let's cool a bit over the ocean. My helicopter flies over the ocean. My helicopter flies over the sea. My helicopter flies over the ocean and performs a rescue at sea. All together now! My helicopter. No, I don't think so. Yeah, we get the point. Okay, you don't have to. Yes. On a more serious note, the Coast Guard uses helicopters to perform rescue operations near and over the water. Look at this helicopter just dangling over the water. Watch as it drops its hoist and performs a rescue. the U.S. naval ship, the Virginia. And we'll watch and see if this helicopter can land on deck. Here it goes! It did it! Because helicopters are fast and they can land just about anywhere, even on board this ship at sea. Much needed supplies and equipment and people can be brought on board or taken off board very quickly. Uh, hard hat Harry, I'm getting a little seasick. Ooh, oh, 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 say no more. Off to dry land and dry air. What is this? You may ask if this is a bird or a plane or a helicopter. And the answer would be a V-22 helicopter that can move its rotors while airborne and turn into a plane for faster speed and longer range. I like this. This is amazing. Very. Because helicopters are so special, they are often used for emergency work. Like fighting fires? Yep. Here we go. Off to join the firefighters. Because of their ability to go anywhere quickly, helicopters are used to put out fires, particularly like this brush fire. That's a bucket of water on their hoist. That's right, Cindy. The water is picked up at a nearby lake or ocean and then flown over the fire area. Then the pilot electronically opens the bottom of the bucket, dousing the water onto the flames. Wow. Are helicopters used for other emergencies also? Yes, they are. Let's go find a police helicopter. This helicopter is used by police forces to observe and pursue. To protect and serve, police have found helicopters very useful. I always thought helicopters were just fun. Now I see that they are also important. Very important. That's right. Oh, no. We better hurry back to Bob or we might miss the rest of our flight to Catalina Island. I'm glad you're back. Oh, we're just getting all close to the harbor here. Oh, oh. Catalina Island, here we come! Look, Taylor! Look at all those sailboats! This is how a bird must look at the world. I like it. It is pretty amazing to think that men and women are able to fly. It had been a dream for centuries and... Oh, well, I could go on and on, but... Look, there's another helicopter. That's the traffic reporting helicopter we always see. News Chopper 4. See the big, large ball mounted on the side of the helicopter? Yeah. Yeah. Inside is the camera. It is electronically controlled from inside the chopper in an area behind the pilot. The camera photographs something on the ground. Then, through a satellite system, it transmits the picture back to the TV station. The TV station then broadcasts the picture on the air. On TV! Oh, there must be a big traffic jam down there, or some good news, because there's two more news helicopters over there. Does the newscaster sit in the camera control area next to the camera person? 
sometimes, but sometimes the newscaster is the pilot. And a tiny camera above the controls photographs the pilot speaking as he or she is flying at the same time. Wow, what a great job. You might have flying helicopters and TV. How high can he fly? Uh, about 12,500 feet. Well, they can fly higher, but anything higher than 12,500 feet, they have to have oxygen. Kids, Eric, we're uh, almost at Avalon. We'll be landing in about two minutes.